what is up um if you see me in the same shirt i'm massively producing videos and uploading them so i am in the same shirt and also i have minimal clothes it's not like minimalist where i only have three shirts but it is what it is so here is a gospel track that looks like a ticket and I think it's super cool. I'm going to be reading it to you. Uh-huh. Okay. Hold on. I wanted to make sure I had it on the right side when I read it to you guys. Okay. So, this is from Track Planet if you guys want to get one. Um, down here at the bottom, it says, One passage not available if, deta if de detached. I'm, like, hyped up on coffee. This is what it says down here on the bottom. Sorry, y'all. Camera's kind of bad. But it says, um, Entitles bear to one gift. Number 777. Tickets to heaven. It says, I give eternal life to them, and they will never re they will never perish. And no one will snatch them out of my hands. John 10, 28. So, John chapter 10, verse 28. And it says, Free ticket, um, admit one. These are super cool. And it says, I think you already have a ticket to heaven tucked in your pocket. After all, you're a good person whose, whose good deeds outweigh the bad, right? Outweigh your bad, right? Some believe that saying a prayer or being baptized is the ticket to heaven. You don't want to be wrong about eternity, so you, here's how you... Here's how to know if you're good enough for heaven. There is no hold on. I had to sit up. You do want to you do want to get baptized. Jesus got baptized. Okay? Like, I just want to tell you that. You do want to get baptized, but getting baptized alone is not enough to get you into heaven. Just so we make that clear. It says, I'm gonna okay. You don't want to be wrong about eternity, so here's how to know if you're good enough for heaven. There is none who does good, no, not one. Romans 3.12 God's standards of goodness is perfection in, th in thought, word, and deed. That means that none of us can make it on our own. Even one, even one sin will keep us from heaven. Not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us. That's Titus, T-I-T-U-S, chapter 3, verse 5. In his mercy, God made a way to forgive his people. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, died on a cross to pay the penalty for their sins. Then he rose from the dead. You must repent and trust in him alone for salvation. Only Jesus is the ticket to heaven, which, sorry, which are you holding? The ticket to heaven or the ticket to hell? So this is, now we're going to read the ticket to hell, which is the backside. You want to read them together. It says, number 666, ticket to hell. They shall be punished. They shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power. Second Theologians 1 9. Only real evil people, only really evil people like murderers get a ticket to hell, right? Here's how a holy God defines evil. Whoever hates his brother is a murderer. First John 3 15. Have you ever hated anyone? Ever told a lie? All liars will have their part in the lake of fire. Revelations 21, 8. Ever looked at someone you're not married to with lust, sexual desire? Jesus said that looking with lust is committing adultery in your heart. Matthew 5, 28. Ever stolen anything? No adulterer or thief will enter the kingdom of God. 1 Corinthians 6, 9 and 10. Ever use God's name in vain? That's called blasphemy. The Lord will not hold him guiltless who takes his name in vain. That's Exodus 20, verse 7. Because God is holy, he must punish all who sins. 
and his place of punishment is held for all eternity. If you have done one of these things, you are currently holding a ticket to hell, but God in his mercy has made a way for forgiveness. He has provided Jesus the ticket to heaven. Which are which are you holding? A ticket to heaven or a ticket to hell? And I want to add to this that just so you understand, Jesus was sent by God. Okay? Jesus was sent by God through a Virgin Mary, completely pure. Jesus being 100% um, God, 100% human. Okay? So, Jesus knows our suffering and our thirst and our hunger. And, like, he knows our emotions and he understands it. And the reason why God sent Jesus through all of through this was so that he can minister to the people the new coming of how to get close, how to, you know, how to become close to God and how to be one of God's children. A um, kid of the king is what I like to call it. Um, I just heard that in Sunday in church Sunday. And I just think that's so funny and so cool. Instead of child of God, I mean, we are a child of God, but the, the kid, the king's kid is like, it's so awesome. So, um, anyways, Jesus, when he was 12, you know, he grew up and, you know, um, by, with Mary and Joseph, Joseph being his earthly father and Jesus being his heavenly father. Jesus, when he was 12, started preaching to the disciples and, or not disciples, I'm sorry. Jesus started preaching in the synagogues. And then when he got older, he started to go around and he was, you know, he told God that, you know, it's time. He told his father, God, that it is, it's time. He's ready. And he started going around ministering and he gathered up his 12 disciples that were just like a bunch of nobodies that everybody hated. They were like, um, Matt, like example, Matthew was a tax collector and tax collector was just as bad as a murderer back in the day. Like everybody disowned you. Everybody hated you. Like everything in between. And Jesus ate with the sinners and the sick and the Pharisees and the Romans and all of them did not like it. Did not like it. And the thing with this too is even with Jesus working on the miracles and you can read it all throughout, all throughout uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. But Jesus was captured by the Romans because of... Um, they were saying that he was blasphemous and that he was not who he says he was. He was not the Messiah. And it breaks my heart when I say this because Barnabas, I'm, I'm like pretty sure I'm saying his name right right now. He was a murderer and he stole and he did a whole bunch of stuff. And yet when Pilate asked... Who do they let go? Jesus, an innocent man. With Pilate looking Jesus right in his face and knowing that he was 100% innocent. Pilate gave the crowd the option of releasing a Barnabas or Jesus. And they chose Barnabas to be released. So then Jesus had the crown pushed into his head and blood and he was being mocked and they they like beat him and they whipped him. I'm telling you, if you want to see a movie, watch The Passion of the Christ. Um, but he carried the cross and everything. And even when they tacked him to the cross and they nailed in his hands and his feet, and he was crying out. He wasn't crying out for himself. He was crying out for everybody else and praying for everybody else. And <sighs> It's just sad. And there was two there was two thieves up on the crosses with them. They had their own cross. And one of them just didn't care. Like blasphemy and said he wasn't Jesus, wasn't the Son of God and wasn't the Messiah and stuff. But the other one believed and he got even while he was up on the cross next to Jesus, he got eternal life. And it's just it's crazy. It's mind blowing to me that you know, how can you sit there and take somebody like that and do that? But it was prophesied that what was going to happen. And when Jesus, when, so they, the Roman guard stabbed Jesus in the side. And when he bled out, not only was he, not only was there blood, but he was water. 
because he was the living water. And even the Roman soldier said, truly, this is the son of the Lord. And when they took him off, they, not the Romans, but when his people took him off and laid him in the tomb, this was Joseph. I'm pretty sure this was, pretty sure Joseph did it. Not his father, but another Joseph laid him in the tomb, got him ready and everything. And three days later, with the stone right there, the stone was rolled away and there was no body. Jesus was, Jesus was resurrected. And Peter and Simon and all of them, they were mourning over the loss of Jesus. And here Jesus comes in the Holy Spirit and tells them, why do you mourn? Your sins are like, y'all sins are forgiven. Go out and preach the gospel to everybody. And y'all like, I just think it's, I just think it's so cool. And if you want to be forgiven and it, here's, okay, so I'm going to say this and I'm going to say this other part. Imagine going and imagine, ha, imagine getting a speeding ticket, but you never paid the fine for it. You never did anything. So it got to the point where you went to judgment in front of the judge and the judge was like, Hey, look, no, you said you didn't do it. You said you didn't pay, you know, you didn't pay, you didn't do nothing like that. So you are going to go to jail. And you're like, well, no, nope, that was the old me. Nah, that was yesterday. Like, no, it was a couple months ago. No, like, I'm a good person. It's gonna be like, no, you actually, the judge is like, no, you actually did something wrong. You actually committed a crime. And, um, I have to send you, like, I have to send you to jail. But then he goes, you know what? I want to tell you that somebody that you don't even know, that loves you, that he want, he wanted to pay the price. He paid your, he paid your, um, your court costs, your court fees, your tech, you know, ticket fees. He paid all of that. So you don't have to go to jail. You get out of free. That's what Jesus did. He paid for our sins so we don't have to go to hell. And I'm telling you, if you want to be a child of God, you need to A, B, C, as I like to tell the kids, admit, believe, and confess. Meaning, admit that you're a sinner, believe fully in the gospel, and C, confess, repent of your sins. Cry out to God and ask him for forgiveness. Admit to him. Admit that you are a sinner. Admit of the things that you have done wrong. Believe the gospel and telling Jesus, you know, telling God that you believe fully in the gospel and confess and just ask him to come into your life and to love you, to nurture you, to hold you, to just be you and to renew you and that you just want to follow him and you accept the forgiveness. And I'm going to tell you right now, even as Christians, and Christians is a Roman word that was used to mock the followers of Jesus, all of the disciples and everybody. Um, I'm trying to say this the best way I can. We are, we are not innocent of sin. We sin daily. We are human, but we try our hardest not to. And when you accept Jesus into your life, he does work on your heart. You will find yourself not getting angry at things that you usually would have gotten angry at. You would have found yourself, you still get angry, don't get me wrong. But when you read, when you read the word of God every day and you believe and you pray and always have a relationship with God. And I'm going to tell you this, you can sit there and get baptized. I'm a Baptist, but you can get baptized. You can, you know, you can admit, believe can everything. But if you are not having a relationship with God and his son, Jesus, you're not going to be known. You have to have a relationship with him. You have to talk to him like he's your best friend. And I just, I love you guys. And if you, if you watch this all the way through, make sure you give it a thumbs up. That way I know. And I just, I love you guys. And um, if you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior because of this video, um, comment down below and share this video with people that if you have a hard time reaching them, but you, you love them. And I, I get it. I get it. 
having somebody that is in a relationship like to you so it could be like your mom your dad your brother your cousin your friend but you have a hard time getting the word across and preaching the gospel to them and things use you can use my video to reach them you can use my video to spread the gospel with them and like i said share this video i'm i'm not trying to get youtube likes and this is what i'm saying i'm not trying to get it to get youtube likes or gains or anything like materialistic i just i want to spread the gospel with each and every one of you and i love you and i care about your salvation so to know if you like it or you comment or you subscribe definitely definitely like thumbs up and comment that way i know that you're not just like subscribing to my video and i because i don't know what video like has people subscribe if that makes sense um but it just lets me know that this video touched you and stuff like that so i love you all i will see you next time make sure you share this with somebody and i'll see you guys next time bye